Yeah, I mean, I'm here in the UFC. It's really exciting to be a part of it, but um, I don't really consider myself like in the UFC until I get my first win, so Saturday's a big day for me. What's the buildup been like for you? I mean, you've dealt with a lot of media attention before, but I mean, this is a dream that didn't even seem possible like a year ago, and now it is. So what's the buildup been like for you? I'm trying to just keep it level. You know, I don't want to get anything too much in my head. I just want to be relaxed. Um, I want to have fun with it. Um, it's very similar to the way Strike Force has run since Zufa bought it out, so the process is all the same. You know, I actually think I had to do more media when I fought Ronda. So, even so, you know, I'm used to it. It's definitely not my first rodeo, so I feel right at home. A lot on the line here, obviously. I mean, a UFC win would be huge. A rematch with Ronda would be huge. I'm sure an, op an opportunity to coach would be huge. I mean, how do you rank those things? Are they all of equal importance, or is there one aspect that really means more than all? Becoming a champion means more to me than anything, more than a rematch, more than anything. Because a that's something that when I'm 80 years old someday and I have kids and grandkids, I can look back and say, look, this is this is what I did. This is my accomplishment. So that's my ultimate goal. Do you feel as being the second women's fight in the UFC that there's a lot of pressure being put on you to really be impressive in this fight? There is, but I can't accept that kind of pressure because it would just be too much. I realize there's going to be a lot of eyes on me, but I really feel like if I just go out there and fight my hardest, that it'll be an impressive performance and an impressive win. What do you think about Kat and her wrestling pedigree, what she brings in to the cage? I mean, she's undefeated as of right now, so what kind of, I guess, issues does she present for you and what are you ready to attack? I think she's a very strong, athletic girl, but technically, um, I don't think she's the most technically sound fighter there is. She's pretty forward style fighter. She gets a little overzealous in some, some positions, and I think that my experience is going to capitalize in the fight. When she makes those mistakes, I'll be able to recognize them. What do you decide to have in your corner, and what are your what are your training plans long term? I know you switched camps here for this one. Yeah, I um I kind of bounced down a little bit and picked up a little bit of everything from everywhere. I started at Yakima MMA, and then I went to um, Benson Henderson's lab for a few weeks, and then I came out here about a week early just to get acclimated. The air is a little bit different, altitude is a little bit higher, and I trained at Drysdale's and Syndicate. And um, in my corner, I'm gonna have Ryan Caraway, I'm gonna have JJ Mix, and I'm gonna have Pete. Or, um, Rick Little. Rick Little. And when I had last spoke to you, actually, you'd said that you were going to take a year off. It was right around the time of the Kedzi fight, and you were in Brazil at that time. Were you in Brazil to actually work on any aspects of your fight game? And what happened to taking that year off? Do you just get the call from the UFC and decided to call it a short visit? Right. Well, the, the year off was a rough estimate of how long I thought I would probably want to take to, to kind of really get that fire back. And uh, it turned out it didn't take much but a UFC call. <laughs> so, um, you know, when, when I got that call and that opportunity, I was like, boom, a, a match lit right inside me. And I was like, all right, the fire's back. You know, this is a huge opportunity. This is what I've been waiting for. And, um, you know, I'm so excited to be here today. I want to make the most of this opportunity. And as far as being in Brazil, I've always wanted to go to Brazil. It's kind of like, who doesn't, you know? So um, I was down there actually for Sam's fight, Sam Sicilian. He fought down there in Brazil, and uh, my boyfriend cornered him, and we just decided to extend our stay and make the most of it, learn a, bit, a little bit about the traditional Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and it's a great experience. It was just a year ago, I guess, that you were still really lobbying for this and being really outspoken about, you know, women getting into the UFC. Looking back at that, I mean, is it surreal that it was just a year ago, and, and was there a moment where you felt like what you were saying really started to get through? Yeah, it is surreal. I, I can definitely um, admit to that. Uh, it, I didn't expect it to come so soon, but I did believe in women's MMA, and I believe that someday it would be here in the UFC. I thought it was probably still another year out from now, but things move really quickly, and um, I think we're ready for it. And I think that everyone's going to be really surprised with the turnout. I think we're going to have a lot of women coming and trying out for the next Ultimate Fighter. I know you're probably sick of hearing about this and seeing this, but Dana says, I mean, the turning point was when you fought Ronda, and, and he saw that, and that really opened his eyes. Now when you look back on that fight, I mean, is it still just make you cringe when you have to see it every time or is there a little bit of pride there that even though you lost I mean that was such a I, I guess on a bigger scale it's such a big moment yeah I was proud of myself you know in a really odd sense of the word I suppose for um, knowing that I'm not you know I, I literally hold out to the bitter end and, and um, you know I'm not one to go in there and break down mentally you know what I mean I, I've trialed and persevered through a lot of uh, a lot of adversity in my fights so I know that I'm strong in that aspect and um, even though I lost it was kind of bittersweet I don't think necessarily, you know, that was the fight for me to win. I think this was the fight for me to win, and I think the fact that I lost Toronto the first time leads to a bigger fight now and a bigger opportunity, so I think everything happens for a reason when one closes, another opens, so...
with, with Jamaica Brandes' comments that she'd prefer to coach against you if she could pick one or the other, and she's kind of rooting for you now. What did you make about that? That made me like her a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. Just a little more. Yeah, we have one more thing we can agree on. I think that tally's two now. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, I mean, she knows. She knows that we have a good rivalry, and I think it will make good for good publicity, good TV. I think everyone would love to see that. And uh, I think it's perfect. Her and I, you know, it's like coaches against each other or teams against each other and then a rematch. It's just sounds like the dream. Does it bother they potentially coach in future opponents? Not at all, actually. You know, I really was thinking about that. Um, I think I would learn more about those girls coming into the, the, the division than they would learn about me. You know what I mean? I may coach and help them, but I'll be able to see how well they pick things up, what they're coming to bring the table with. You know what I mean? I'm going to see them training every single day. So um, if it really boils down to that, you know, I want to look at it that aspect, I really think that it would benefit me more than that. You've been plugging away, you know, just trying to get the UFC, you know, You've moved in the UFC for longer than anybody really. You've been at the top level for so long. Does it bother you how much credit Ronda gets for that when you know she's kind of a newcomer to it and you've been doing it for a lot longer? You know, Ronda put in her work and she just was able to get there very quickly, you know, and, and I can't blame her for that. You know, I would say if I was in her shoes, I'd probably do the same thing. But it um, I, it's irritating at myself because that I wish that I could have done more. But the only way to, to fix that is to put one foot in front of the other and to keep going. And, you know, I can't, I can't hate on Ronda for her success. I just have to want to get there too, you know? So.